Hello, it's Caroline at For the Love of Crochet, and you know me, I have been a very busy shopper this week, and I have lots to share with you, so let's just get into it. But first things first, I'm going to show you my FO, and I had a special request for a baby blanket for a boy, and um, had to be soft, it had to have a certain look, it had to have a certain feel, and... I was trying to find it within my um, stash and I just don't have all the yarn to make a baby blanket. So I don't have a lot of one color. Um, so my blankets tend to be very scrappy. Well, it turns out that I found the yarn with all my hunt shopping and I finished it and it came out so beautiful. So I made a little beanie, a little baby beanie to go with it. So this is... Um, this is made out of Bernat Forever Fleece, not the finer, just the Forever Fleece, which was my problem. So I made this cute little beanie and they, this is so incredibly soft. I'm going to turn down the shades just so you can see all the design of the texture of this blanket is so beautiful. Um, white really gets blown out. <gasps> I just love it. Now with this pattern, if you do do it, um, the Ber Bernat Forever Fleece Finer would be a lovely choice. I chose to go with um, the thicker one because that is the one that I had and that was what I was having a tough time finding. Probably because we're towards the end of winter and they're getting rid of the winter yarns. Um, so I had a hard time finding this and it is just so beautiful. Um, if you do want to try this, I'm going to give you some advice because I, I, I know you're going to want to try this. If you do, have a stitch marker that's labeled two, three, four, five, because it is a four row repeat, but not necessarily. It's really only two because you're making these ridges, these, um, peaks, but they're alternating. So these are two rows and then the next is two rows. So that's why it's offset and you'll get this lovely design. But I had a hard time trying to count the rows on the side. It's very, it was very difficult. So if you do do this, save yourself some really <laughs> struggles and get a stitch marker that says two, three, four, five, or know it in your head, uh, red, yellow, green, blue, whatever stitch markers you're going to use. But I would highly suggest picking two, three, four, five, because those are the rows repeated. Uh, row one is just your beginning one. Uh, the other advice I would say is be prepared to count five over and over and over and over and over. I suppose you could try to do it without if you wanted to, but the beginning stitch of each peak is, it's a challenge. So I would count. I counted every single stitch of this baby. Lots of work went in this, but it, the work that went into it results in a glorious baby blanket. Now you could do this with a thin yarn and I think it would be lovely. I want to do this stitch again. Um, it wasn't that challenging. It did grow on me, but I, I struggled. So next time I'm going to use a stitch marker that just counts it for me. And then um, I'm just going to be prepared to count to five. <laughs> so with that being said, I love this blanket. And this is just a single crochet skip chain and then single crochet. A basic border because you want the design to stand out. And uh, so that was the baby blanket. This took three skeins and it's really big. Um, this is half and you know, it covers my body. So it is a beautiful blanket. I believe I went to 100. Oh, oh, and another suggestion, the pattern has a certain amount of stitches. If you want it to be longer or shorter, follow the tutorial by the crochet crowd. He breaks it down to where you can um, do more stitches if you want to or cut it down 
to do less if you want to make a smaller blanket. So definitely go watch the tutorial before doing this because he, he does give you those details. Okay. So that is my finished. I am so glad I'm done. And I, I told, <laughs> I'm no longer taking special requests for baby blankets. <laughs> Uh, I just, I'm going to make baby blankets and they'll be available. So I'll try to make boy ones and I'll try to make girl ones, but I don't want to do special requests anymore. It's so hard because I don't want to have to spend $50 on yarn to make this blanket, um, and charge because it was for my sister. I don't want to charge her. Um, so I want to use what I have anyway. I'm so glad it's done and I am so pleased with how it came out. It's so beautiful. And if you could feel it, it's so gloriously soft. Now I went to Dollar Tree because I am looking for things for your next Omigurumi toolbox. And I did find some Omigurumi toolbox items, but I also found some other things for my, um, my challenge this year, which is to yarn bomb somewhere in my community. <laughs> So let's just start with the first, the first thing I see. Okay. Now, if you like to do markets or make baby items, um, they always have these little stuffed animals and I use them to make loveys for, see, and then you just put, you make a granny square around a Dollar Tree hair tie and put it around. These are very popular for some people. Um, so yes, so this is one of them. I made one of these for a very special friend of ours who lives in Japan, who just had their very first baby. And I sent over this one. And so this little lovey is all the way in Japan and it's such a cute one. And it was made with Premier Parfait Chunky. So that is so soft. Um, but they had a bunch of these little bunnies. Now they have a ton of choices. I just picked three bunnies because if I make them, I may donate them to my local, um, hospital, children's hospital, Ronald McDonald house. Um, they're going to check to see if I can do it anyway. So I picked up these three and again, you just make whatever little blanket you can use your scrap yarns. And if, I've, I thought maybe the hair ties would be dangerous for little ones. Like if they were trying to put it around their own neck, I'm just scared of it. So with this one, I did not do a hair tie. I just left an opening. I just left it opening. So it's not going to stretch. It's not going to get any bigger. I can't do anything. Um, so that is what I did with this one. And then you just kind of have to wiggle it in. There you go. So this one's so cute. Okay. And then the other one I have here is a, one of these bunnies. Now don't feel like you have to run out and get these. They have these every year because this one's last year's and this is, um, Caron Simply Soft yarn. So though that is my first bit. So if you like to make loveys, I'm just going to throw these because <laughs> I don't have the space. Okay, next. So since I make a lot of bunnies, oh, you can't see them. <laughs> and I've been gifting them and selling them, so I don't have them all. But I, they had these carrots, and this is the perfect time for their spring. And I just thought, well, you know what? That would be a lovely embellishment to add to my bunny amigurumis if it calls for it. So I picked up three bags of these because I make a lot of bunnies. <laughs> Okay, turns out I only bought two of them. So I will have these for all the bunnies I make. Okay, next. Um, I had watched Pamela's Adoring Crochet and she is having a Valentine cow, which is just make a basket. Now I made a basket yesterday and it took me one day. So um, I worked on it a little bit throughout the day. It is fairly a fast make because it's 20 rows and I think the whole thing was only like 72 stitches when you got to the final round. So 
I would went to Dollar Tree because I was thinking I'm going to add ribbon or I'm to see what I could add because I like to do a little extra. Well, um, I didn't realize it had to be strictly Valentine. And some of the things I picked up were more Easter and bunny. And so I'm like, well, I'm not going to add it, but I'm going to show you what I got. So these are gingham bunnies in the shape of the bunny. And the back side is um, felt. Easily to be stitched on. It's going to, it's so thin, but very, let me open it. Very cute, very cute little bunny. And then there's the back. Okay, so you get six of them in here. So I picked up the pink one and I thought I was just gonna sew this on the basket, but it's strictly Valentine's, so I decided not to go with that. I also picked up the blue one. So right now they're unloading all their Easter stuff. So now's the time to look for Easter stuff. But I picked up the blue one and the pink one, and these are going to make lovely embellishments on a baby blanket. If you crochet a blanket on a basket like I was gonna do, um, these can be labels on the back of a, a huge toy. Uh, tell me what else you think you could do with this, but this is something I know I can use in my crochet, so I picked it up. Okay, I also picked up these chalkboard tags. Again, if you used something, if you made a dog and put, I rough you, you can make this Valentine. You can put this on one of your baskets, right? You can use this to label your baskets in your craft room. It's probably the wrong side. It comes with the little uh, string as well. And you get four of them. So here it is. Oh, there's two of them. It says you get four of them, but there looks more. And then there's the back. And again, it comes with a string and it already has a hole. Good quality. I mean, it's decent. So with that, they also have some very cool pins, chalkboard pins at the Dollar Tree. I already opened mine and I picked up a pink one as well. And let's just write... I love you. Voila. Oh, it's probably backwards, huh? Okay. Now, if I wanted to erase it. Okay, this one doesn't erase. <laughs> it's not erasing. So... Uh, whatever you're going to stick on there or write on there, make sure you, it's going to stay there. <laughs> so the Dollar Tree tag's not good for erasing chalkboard or these pin marks. However, I already picked this up and it is Scrap Balls 51. So I know it might be backwards, but I am keeping track of all my scrap balls right here. So if I pull one out or add one in and it does erase, I've already tried it. <laughs> and I was checking the Dollar Tree one. Now that sign came from the Dollar Tree too, but it erased and this did not. So not sure. But they have Dollar, Dollar Tree has chalkboard pens. So they write like a gel um, crayon, like very glidable. So, and sometimes it'll leave a clump behind. So you don't want to smear it because it'll mark it. Okay. So we're going to, um, move on to, again, I was pick, I was going to pick up this for my basket for the cow and it turns out it's not going to work because she's like, red, pink, white, gray. Those are your only choices. And she says, no blue, no yellow. I watched the video again. I was like, well, darn. <laughs> these have colors in them. So I couldn't use these and I was going to weave that through my basket. So, uh, but nonetheless, you know, you can get some very cute ribbon at Dollar Tree. And then I figured this is very good to attach tags. Um, especially like those chalkboard tags, just in case the ones they gave me 
you get a lot of yardage on this baby. So I went ahead and picked it up because I know I can use it to attach tags or to um, tie up things that I'm doing for yarn bomb. Now I mentioned this in my last Dollar Tree Amigurumi toolbox video and I'll link it here, but I didn't buy them. So this time I bought them because I, I have never made a crochet gnome before and I finally have bought my first gnome pattern <laughs> and they are a Valentine one. And I picked up this heart because I'm gonna paint this black which I already picked up from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm just gonna paint it black and instead of having just a flat bottom and hoping it stands, I'm just gonna glue it right here and this, imagine this black, and those are gonna be like its feet popping out from its body. You know, like so, like its feet are popping out, like its shoes. So that is what I picked these up for. And I bought these at the Dollar Tree and these are very thick, like very sturdy thick. That is maybe, I don't know, like almost an inch thick. So these little gnomies are gonna be sturdy. <laughs> okay, now again, thinking basket and trim around clothes for my uh, amigurumi toys. I just know I can use this, so I picked this up too. And this is a trim pack. Now this has little balls, little, um, little tiny ones, and then these are little tiny gingham bunnies, and this is Rick Rack. I think that's what they call it. It's a zigzag. Just see these up close. So you get these, you get these little pink gingham bunnies, and then you get this Rick Rock. Now I can use this as trim on any Amigurumi toy, any clothes. I can use it for bows. Um, I mean, just let your imagination go. And I will definitely be incorporating this into my crochet projects. So stay tuned because I'm already got my brain working. <laughs> so there's one. Now, the other one I brought, bought, was strictly all pom-pom. And my basket will have this. So stay tuned later this week. I'm going to post my basket on another video. And I incorporated this. So if you want to make a basket, head on over to your Dollar Tree and you can get super crazy. You can get super creative with that. So that is cool. And I loved, I loved using this. I was shocked to see these at my Dollar Tree and I already put them to good use, but these are star paper clips and this is Jot. Very nice quality, very beautiful. You can use these as bookmarks. You can crochet something on this end, right? Put it in your, your book or whatever, uh, people use these in junk journals. <laughs> I'm using this in my journal to keep my place where I, I'm i gonna use the most, so I keep it right there so I could just turn to it. I have been finding these very helpful and they are gorgeous. They're like a rose gold. And when I went to my other Dollar Tree, I saw heart-shaped ones, but I really like the stars, so I stuck with the star. I just got the one. And I also picked up these pins, which has a gold trim and a glass top, or like a glass top. I'm not gonna open it. Oh wait, I did open it. Because to, to hang up my little chalkboard sign down there, I already pulled one out of the corner. So, there we go. It's beautiful. I mean, it's plastic, but it has a glass look. So I love it. Not necessarily crochet related, but I'm definitely using it for organization and hanging up and keeping track of my things in my journal. So I like it. I'm not going to throw that one. <laughs> Okay, on to storage. I found these cute things, but let me show you this first. They had a see-through bag. Now, the see-through bag also has little pockets here, and I just thought, well, I can put 
I can put little things in there, notes, whatever. Um, eyeglass cleaners, because I always need those. And then it has the zipper. Very simple bag. Nice to add to any project bag. So I just picked one of these up because I want to see how I like it. Um, the next is the baskets. I saw these and I thought, you know what? Look at the design on that. They had different colors. They had the minty green type, and I think they had white, no, blue. They had blue, minty green, and pink. So I went with the pink. I think I can crochet this or incorporate it into my crochet, or you can use this as a project or to store just a little bits of yarn whatever you got going on. I loved this. So I picked up three of them, I think, because I think that they would look cute on a shelf as well. Three of them. You can use your chalkboard tags that you get at the Dollar Tree and label it. You can put your threads in here, your cotton threads. I mean, who knows what you can use it for, but I'm definitely gonna be using it for organization or possibly crocheting something on here. So God practice my yarn bombing. <laughs> so I picked these up and I very much enjoy, I know I can, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to use these. The last three things I got from the Dollar Tree are these. So lately I've been seeing people make the, there's a bunny, wreath thing that they're trying to do from the Dollar Tree. So I went to three Dollar Trees and I don't have those yet. So I think they're part of the Easter and I saw some boxes of Easter. So they haven't fully unloaded yet, but they did have this, which is a star. So here we go. I can crochet something with this. I can yarn bomb. I can go hang this on something. So I thought that would be cool or put it in my daughter's room. They also had this heart. So again, you can make a bunch of pom-poms with your leftover yarn. I mean, let's just, you know, I'm just, I just got them because I know I can use them and I'm trying to distash my yarn. So they also had this one and I have something in mind for this, which is just a square. And we'll see how soon I can get to this one because this is the one that I'm, my brain's going on. And then the last one I got was this cross one. It's really big. So I got the cross and what would be nice is that if you loaded this with flowers and put it on memorial um, or put it out in your front yard, I think it's pretty so. I mean, I think I can make it really pretty. So I picked up this one. So those are the four that I picked up. Actually, if you are one who enters into the fair, these frames might be cool for you to choose from. Go get them now. I don't know how long they'll have them. This was not part of the Easter section. Apparently they have a bunny, a bunny ear head with ears and that was the one I was going for, you know. <laughs> But this is what I found. So those are all the things that I found at Dollar Tree. Now, what I found at Hobby Lobby. Now, in my next video where I showcase my the baskets that I do make for the Valentine cow that Pamela's Adoring Crochet is doing, I went ahead and went to Hobby Lobby because I wanted to try and incorporate the colors she wanted. And even if I didn't make it in time, that's okay. You know, I'll show it to you anyway. So I picked up these colors because of course Hobby Lobby has 30% off. So I have this pink, red, and then this one has all the pinks and reds in it along with the white. So I'm going to try and make a basket. And it might be a smaller one because I'm using this small cotton, which is a, it is a number four, but I think it'll come out smaller than the one that I made because I used other yarn for that one. The second thing, which I'm really excited about, oh, 
feast your eyes on this baby. Oh my goodness. This is number 10 cotton thread. And instead of having my threads in these little, you know, these things that you buy in colors that, you know, I probably won't use, I decided to pick this up, which has, I oh, want to open it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so beautiful. How many colors do you get? So you get 100% mercerized Egyptian cotton, 30 by 10 grams, 60 yards, 10, number 10 crochet thread. I get 30 different beautiful colors because I have two yellows, three different pinks. Oh, and they are glorious colors. <gasps> this was $31.99. And, you know, these colors are so beautiful. I love this red. So I'm really excited about that because not only can I use it for embroidery on the dolls, I can also use it to make a project. So there's enough yarn thread in here to make a project. So I'm very excited to get this, very happy. And this, this little mess, I don't like the colors that you get here. I mean, the little bag that you buy I mean, I don't use half these colors. I mainly use the black, the white, and the pink. Uh, but with that, I feel like I have enough to make a project. So I'm really excited. Now, last on the haul <laughs> is I went to a Goodwill store. So that is the final one. And I only spent $3 on this. And it's so cool. It was priced at 10, but they gave it to me for $3, which is a push pin. So these are push pins already in it. And I can keep track or set because one important thing about setting goals is to put it visually. You have to see your goals visually. Otherwise they become in the back of your mind. And then when you go back to them, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or I never did do this. Um, but if you have it somewhere visually that you can look at, you're going to be more successful in reading, reaching your goals. So I got this. It's perfect color. I love the colors, the brightness of it. And um, it's quite big too. So I am going to push pin my ideas or my goals on here. So I'm really excited. So that is one thing I got and it has lovely hooks on it. I don't, this, this was probably bought like this. So I don't think anyone made it because it's very well made. Okay. The other thing I found at my Goodwill store is this granny square book. And I think I got this for a dollar. So lots of squares. So I'm adding to my collection. <laughs> lovely squares. This is called the Granny Square Book, Timeless Techniques and Fresh Ideas for Crocheting Square by Square. Margaret Hubert. I know it's backward. Margaret Hubert. Um, they, they have lovely instructions in the front details. They have a graph. They have a graph and a row by row. Um, so you'll get all the instructions row by row, but then they also have a graph to see as well. So that is really important to know. Um, again, oh, that is lovely. So you have the instructions and then you also have the graph. This is a good book. That is really good to have together. Oh, and I also just, I just picked this remnant of fabric up because I thought it was so funny. And if I do a little fussy cut and cut it out and sew it on some projects, I thought it was funny. So I picked it up. I mean, it has some interesting characters on here. Uh, I just picked it up for the humor. <laughs> it just has some interesting characters on here. So I just grabbed it. 
So that is my Goodwill shopping for the day. Uh, how many of you are heading to Dollar Tree now? <laughs> Okay, so let's go over some things that are coming up. I have a book, Hooking Up with Books with Craftably Ever After. That is going to be showcasing on the 15th, and that was based off the book um, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. <laughs> I'm still working on my project. I have not quite finished it yet. Um, and I'm thinking of starting another one. I don't know if I can finish in time. So that will be showcasing on the 15th. If you have any pictures to send to me, if you've read that book or you were inspired or you have something that fits the, the book, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Um, I received one picture so far and it's super cool. So uh, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. The other thing I have coming up is, of course, at the end of this week, I don't know what day, if it'll be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but I'll show you the baskets that I'm making for Pamela's Adoring Crochet Along uh, for the Valentine basket. So that is coming up this week. I think I'll show you, um, based off all the Amigurumi book tags that are going on, what ended up in my cart <laughs> and what now... And you know what? Out of all the Amigurumi book tags, I am one of the ones that had the least amount of Amigurumi books. So I went whining to my husband about how everyone else has more than me. <laughs> so I picked up a few more. So I'll show you which ones I picked up based off all the book tags going around. Um, if you haven't seen the Amigurumi book tag, that is where everyone is showing all their Amigurumi books so that you can get a better feel or look at them to see if that's something you'd want to have in your library. The Amka doll. Somebody sent me a picture of their Amka doll and here it is. She did such a cute job. I really love how hers came out and she sent me that picture and so I just wanted to share with you if you have that pattern that is a lot of fun to make um it's available on etsy oh so, here we go i shall see you again soon in the next video talk to you soon